Hey, what's happening? Welcome to Mates TV. So I certainly did not expect to be spending my Saturday morning basically rifling through transfer market stats to gain the latest insight on all of the potential midfielders who could be available in the closing week of the transfer market. But here we are after Jürgen Klopp in the embargoed section of Friday's pre-Bournemouth press conference revealed that um, the journalists were right. He was wrong uh, and Liverpool did need a midfielder and would try and get one in. Of course, half ten on a Friday that broke, uh, sparking wild speculation. Just lots and lots of, you know, office, this is happening, gifts um, and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I thought to talk a little bit about it. What kind of profile midfielder Liverpool are, would, would want, yes, but also what would be available, what might be the transfer strategy involved in this one. And we'll talk about a few names as well that maybe fall into those categories because... Um, yeah, by all accounts, it looks like whether it will happen or not, we don't know. But it looks like it's been pretty clearly made out by Liverpool that yeah, they're gonna they're gonna try and get this sorted. So, um, just to explain, obviously, where this comes about from, because of course, Jurgen does his weekly Premier League press conference normally on the Friday, Friday morning, lunchtime, or whatever. And then you have the normal press conference, which is often streamed live on LFC TV. We get it on on Redmen shortly after the fact. Um in YouTube for YouTube and, and podcasts and stuff and then they do an extra embargoed section at the end which is normally for the print media and it's a little bit of a throwback to the old school ways of things being done where you can have a couple of exclusives that you can put in the big weekend national papers to drive sales or, or whatever and um, but what you're seeing now of course is that that thing getting filmed but it, it's when the embargo is is lifted you're now seeing that being put out again if you want to watch that press conference it's over on the Red Men YouTube channel now so you can get the, the tone, exactly everything Jürgen says, you can go and see that for yourselves if you really want to. That is there. Um, but yeah, he was asked the question. And yeah, it looks like Liverpool have performed a little bit of a... I say a U-turn. I think Jürgen was quite clear in, in his messaging was, look, Liverpool are always after the right players. And if the right players that they want and they fit are available, then they'll move for them. Um, and of course, we know that's all within reason, of course, because if someone becomes available... And it'll fit. Like for example, like Kylian Mbappe might decide he's available, but if he's on half a million pounds a week, then as I say, look, we all know there's exceptions to this rule, of course. Um, so what kind of midfielder are going to be going for? I want suggestions in the comments section underneath, if you don't mind. And if you wouldn't mind dropping a like on this video, that always helps as well, of course. But I kind of surmise there's a number of categories, uh, and I think they range on one end of the spectrum is like get someone who's in sort of last chance saloon you get like an old head a veteran who you can just pick up for next to nothing you get one season out of you'll just provide some cover and some good experience and you can move them on loan signings would fall under that as well then you've got like is there a young another young player that Liverpool can bring on and then you, you buy in for the short term in terms of body but also medium and long term as they grow and they, they their abilities improve and they can become a long term footballer for Liverpool then you've got the sort of middle ground, which is go and buy someone who's maybe a bit of a, a bargain. There's some value in there. You know he's a good footballer, perhaps has some, you know, a, a good level of experience, but isn't like at the end of their career or too much at the start of their career. But you can you can bring them in, and if they work, amazing. You've got a really good solid squad player. And if they don't, then you've got a chance of flipping them come the end of the season. They're not going to be on extortionate wages. They've not cost you loads of money. And there's still some market value in there. So you can say, I mean, look, and a bit like what we did with Davies, but on a, on a higher level. You know, we brought Ben Davies as a body um, and, and they basically flipped them for double the, double the price ultimately as well. So that, and then you start to get towards, and I think that this was the top end of the spectrum is a sit up, take notice European football because Liverpool mean business transfer. And that's going to be one that costs you the absolute earth in transfer fees and probably a very, very hefty wage sum as well. And I think there may, there's maybe a slight tier below that and a slight tier at the top of that. And I, I, I don't really have the names for the old players as such. And there's not tons of loans being banded around. But an example of that from last season would have been Saul Niguez. That's the kind of player that we're kind of talking about in that regard. Then you move through youngsters. I'm not sure Liverpool are necessarily going to go for the youngsters because, well, you've got Harvey Elliott, you've got Carvalho, and you've got Curtis Jones. I don't see that. I think Liverpool are stocked for talented young midfielders. So I just don't think 
I don't particularly think any of those are going to be in the conversation. And I, I've been proven wrong plenty of times before. And the loan thing, why Liverpool tend not to like loans because it's, it's a bit of wasted development. I remember um, Liverpool being linked with players in the past and, and the, the line from the club is effectively, why would we train another club's player to be better to then go and be better for that club? I believe this was, is it Renato Sanchez? I think fell under this when he was at Bayern Munich and Liverpool were linked and he was just like... No, because we're going to improve a Bayern Munich player and then give him back to Bayern Munich so they can have a better... Like, Liverpool will buy someone, I think, before they were to, before they were to do that. Um, except in rare circumstances, of course. And obviously, we saw those on Kabak being an example of this, where he comes in, he's a, he's a body, and you know maybe if he doesn't get injured, maybe he does a little bit better for Liverpool. We don't know, but you know that's, that's an example where Liverpool have done it recently, of course. Where I think is more interesting, where I think Liverpool will be looking to shop, is these other brackets. And the, the, the brackets are a little bit more exciting, if we're being perfectly honest. Obviously, you've got your earth-shattering football take no transfer. Now, that would be turning around to Dortmund and going, look, come on. We, I mean, Henry Winter was tweeting this week, wasn't he, saying uh, he's really looking forward to seeing Bellingham play for Liverpool next season, which kind of got us going, oh, what? Oh, okay, yeah. Henry? Henry, hi. Good guy, by the way. Henry, hi. Could you just clarify those comments? Because it looks like you're saying that Jude Bellingham is going to be at Liverpool next season. Um, now, if that's the well where there's like a, a, there's a, a gentleman's agreement or whatever behind the scenes, then you go, well, look, we'll give you an extra X amount of tens of millions to make that happen. Now, you know, that implies that there'll be a similar deal to what happened with Naby Keita, where obviously we signed him a year a year earlier. We know clearly Canate had those agreements in place from earlier on, just after, probably just after the January transfer window. Similarly with Virgil van Dijk, there was obviously something... Uh, discuss their apologies. Um, so, yeah, is there is there something that can be done with that? I think I don't think there's many midfielders who fall into that like football take notes category. Now I was asked the question, does Frankie de Jong fall into that? And I think, and this is why I think I think there's a there's a slight tier underneath that, which is going by a brilliant football at the peak of his powers, who's ready to make a step up. Um, or at least is already at that level and wants to continue being at that level, is Frankie de Jong. And you and okay, he's gonna cost you a good amount of money and he's gonna cost you probably really, really high wages, but absolute prime footballer. But the problem is is I don't think I think Jude Bellingham is at the is the far top end of the spectrum, the most desirable midfield talent on the planet right now. Every football club uh, with ambition to be in the best football club in Europe wants Jude Bellingham at this point. So I think that would be air chattering. The problem is, is Frankie de Jong's been linked with Manchester United all, all, all summer. Um, and that doesn't mean he's a worse player for it, but it does take a bit of the luster off of the idea that Man United thought they could get him. He says, well, is he really like, why Why has no one been beaten down Barcelona's door to, to get that done? Because if he's that good... So I have, I have a few concerns over de Jong, so I, and I think he falls into a similar category with, a, with let's say, Nicolo, uh, Nicolo Barella, albeit with far less of that, like, United... Greasy finger taint. Um, he's close to being that top end, but either way, either way, it'd be an exciting sign if Liverpool's going by either of them. Let's be perfectly clear on either on, on this, of course. But yeah, I think they they're just fractionally below that tier of, of the Bellingham thing, and that's not necessarily an ability thing. It's more the message that it sends to football to go and get those deals over the line. Um, and then you have got the other bracket, and this is. That that thing of idea of like someone who's got good experience, good good age, good age category, and you can get them on a reasonable bargain. A couple of names that have been floated for that are Sander Berge, who's obviously still in the championship with, with Sheffield United. Liverpool were heavily linked to him a couple of seasons ago before he moved there, because uh, obviously we played him uh, when they, he was at Genk a couple of times in the Champions League. Um you've got Yuri Tielemans who would fall into that category as well. Possibly James Madison, although maybe you could make a case James Madison falls closer to the to the Barella, Frankie de Jong stuff. Not again in terms of ability necessarily, but he's going to cost more money, I think. Whereas I think you look at, let's say, Uri Uri Tielemans is a really good focus for this one. There's reports between 16 and sort of 30 million for him. Now, for 25 years old, he averages between five, six, seven goals a season slightly more in terms of assists. So it's about about an average of five goals a season, about an average of eight assists a season. And that seems to be quite universal along a, around a lot of Liverpool's targets. But he's done seasons in the Premier League now. He's at an affordable price. His wages aren't going to be ludicrous because ultimately he's at Leicester. It, we, we have, you would probably have to give him 
a, a good solid wage and improvement on what he's on at Leicester, but he's not coming in going, right, I want Mo Salah wages. I want Virgil van Dijk wages. I mean, he could do, but he's not going to get them. Um, and what you've got with someone like him is there's a list of clubs, I think, around the Premier League who in the summer would go, yeah, go on. We'll have him if you don't want him. Newcastle would happily take him. You know, God, this this this, this guy, West Ham would have him. There's probably clubs on the continent that would have him. Man United would would have him if, if for example. So there's there's an interesting one. You've got uh, Conrad Lehmer maybe falls into that category as well a little bit. Who's at um, Leipzig in that solid footballer, not necessarily one of the great world stars, um, but could come in and do a really 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 useful job. Uh, Dan Kenneth. Uh, he's done some really good tweets on this actually if you want to check him out on, on Twitter a good mate of mine and he was saying how uh, they've been like touting him for for a couple of years now as a really good solid Liverpool target who cover a number of positions so I think that, I think that's the really interesting conversation and it makes you wonder what where are we at are Liverpool at break glass emergency style situation a la January in Covid season where it's like Dear God, dear God Almighty, we need to perform some transfer voodoo here just to get some bodies over the line. If that's the case, that means we probably need to temper our expectations as to who this footballer or footballers are going to be. Because, look, I, I, the, 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 I equated this on the transfer uh, on the JNO Insight show with Neil Jones a couple of weeks ago on Redmond Plus that... So, like, Mother's Day is fast approaching, and if you haven't sorted your Mother's Day present out with, like, a week or two weeks on, plenty of time, the quality of what you're going to be able to buy will suffer significantly the closer you get to that date. So, you know, if you say you've got a week, you can literally go shopping to a bunch of different shops. If you've got a month, you can literally get anything ordered from anywhere in the world, whatever you want, customised to your perfect specification. If you get to the day before, you're shopping on Amazon Prime and Amazon Prime only, or maybe like some local shops. If you get to the morning of, you wake up on Mother's Day and you've not sorted that, you'll run into Tesco's or the corner shop and you're grabbing whatever monkey flowers are left, whatever cards left, uh, and whatever you can grab that you think even slightly would uh, tickle the fancy of your of your of your beloved mother. Um, and that's where Liverpool are probably at actually at this point of the transfer window. It shuts on Thursday. We're now on Saturday. I would surmise that if they've allowed this to be out there, if Klopp has been uh, has spoken about this freely, you would suggest that it's in a work in progress. So maybe something's going to just drop in tonight or tomorrow night or whatever. I don't know. But yeah, I, I the bigger the deal, the less likely it is for a number of reasons. Like you've got to be able to replace footballers. So a good example being Felipe Coutinho. Barcelona want him, and Liverpool would probably let him go because he wants to go to Barcelona. He's a bit of a bad apple in the camp, got a bad back. Um, but ultimately, they can't replace him with a player of that kind of quality with the days left of the transfer window. So they tell him to basically book his ideas up and get, and they tell Barcelona to basically fist themselves. Um, that's the kind of thing that Liverpool will probably be coming up against. The better the quality of player, the more integral he will be to the football club that he's at. And that's going to make those deals more complex. Now we've seen Naby Keita link with Dortmund this week. We've seen him link with Leipzig as well. That might, there might be a bit of make weight. There might be a bit of goodwill that you can generate there. We saw a similar thing with Fabio Carvalho in January where Sending Nico Williams out on loan kind of greases the wheels in that deal. Maybe there's some clever Julian Ward for the chess to be done here. I did see one wonderful piece of speculation on Twitter, which I would adore. Um, going by Frankie de Jong, which means that Barcelona then have the money to go and buy Bernardo Silva and then leave Man City with no window of opportunity left to replace Bernardo Silva. Talk about, you know... Basically, what you'd be doing with the Michael Edwards statue, we'd be cutting the head off and putting Julian Wards on top straight away. Straight away. Uh, yeah, for the chess of the highest order. Um, the only problem I would say, on the, just briefly on the Frankie de Jong thing, is I, don't, I can't attest to the, the true quality of his footballs. I can look at the stats, I can watch bits and pieces of them, engage them as, as footballers, roughly speaking, but no one can truly know whether they can fit into a Liverpool style of play, the robustness. Um, of how Liverpool train and it requires them to play and of course just the Premier League intensity in general but also the Frankie de Jong thing what are his wages like is he going to come in you know is he coming in on Virgil van Dijk wages and given we've just gone through this all with with, with, with Mo Salah in the summer and, and obviously Sadio Mane and, and Gini Wijnaldum wanting big wages and all this kind of stuff how does that work is he of the quality where he can come in 
I would really want to come in on less than that. There's the, again, not for me to solve, not for me to sort out. But what I think is interesting is most of these midfielders are being linked with are 25 years old. That is the exact age sort of category and profile that Liverpool are desperately short of in terms of their wealth of midfield options. And more tellingly as well, when you look at the likes of Tielemans, you look at the likes of Barella, you look at the likes of Frankie de Jong, they don't miss a lot of games through injury as well. In fact, I don't think Barella's missed a game, a league game through injury or a game in general for two seasons. Boss, we need more of that. One well, slight note of caution is that Naby Keita did not have any particular noticeable injury concerns when we brought him in as well. And again, we won't know until we get them into the door. I like the look of Barella. If I'm being honest, I, 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 if you can't get Bellingham, it sounds like, oh, I'll just settle for Barella. But like that fight and determination that you see from him, I could see him playing on that right-hand side of midfield for Liverpool and being bullish and driving forward the ball and looking to pick passes. I think he'd be a, obviously a stellar addition. I wouldn't tell me no, no sort of Frankie Dunk. I wouldn't tell me no sort of pretty much anyone at this point because as much as we know we need to improve upon our best players, for the next month, Liverpool just need a good footballer, a good footballer who's, who's, who's better and more in the prime of his career than, than James Milner, pretty much. Love Milner, but he can't play two games a week for the next month. He, he just can't do it. And Carvalho and Elliot are still a little bit raw. They're going to need help. We're going to need people to help carry water, particularly in that squad for the next month. So, yeah. Um, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Very exciting this day. Very, very exciting. Um, it kind of goes against this. I did a video Liverpool will sign in midfield a couple of weeks ago. And knowing that it was such an obvious hole in the Liverpool squad, they were going to do it. It was just whether they were prepared or they could afford to wait. And it just looks like the amount of injuries that they've got. It's like, well, it's cutting off your nose despite your face this time. It's, had, it's, it's reaped so many rewards over the years to just wait and get the right man. But as po pointed out, there's a number of players who are injured prone. There's a number of players out of contract in the summer. And if Naby's not looking to extend and, in fact, he's looking to actively move, then, you know, you've, you're going to have to have a wholesale purchase of midfielders next summer so you might as well jump the gun and, and save yourself a little bit of time and hopefully a little bit of heartbreak and hopefully a lot of points um but yeah there you go just my take on all of that let me know your thoughts who would you be buying what kind of profile do you think liverpool should be targeting as well realistically because as much as like i say let's go and buy 120 million pounds of football there's obviously considerations attached to all of those things anyway your boss I don't know if anyone's told you that, but you're amazing. Keep smiling, keep happy, have a wonderful day, a wonderful weekend. Hopefully before um, you've seen this video, Liverpool have, have, have smashed Bournemouth everywhere. If they haven't, then I agree that it's going to be harder to smile, but hopefully Liverpool can bring in some reinforcements, make us all happy again, and then yeah, go and dominate every other team from now, from now to the rest of the season. Yeah, let's all agree that that should happen, right? Yeah, 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 sound.